Good evening. The hour being after 6.45 p.m. Uh, it's now my high honor and privilege to call the March 17th, 2022 school committee meeting to order. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome. We want to wish a happy high holiday to all those who celebrate this evening. I think my colleagues and I will look more closely when we do our scheduling and calendaring next year <laughs> as well. Um, but with that, uh, welcome. Uh, our first order of business is recognitions, and we have the logo for Master Plan uh, Steering Committee. I would uh, perhaps uh, call upon our colleague, Carrie Denizio, who is our representative to the Master Plan, if you'd like to introduce uh, our young artists. Sure. Um, so... I will say, first of all, congratulations to Walpole High students Kara Morris, Chloe, Chloe Bingen, Colleen Finn, and Ariana Correntis. Each, along with their classmates, had submitted designs for the new logo for the Master Plan Steering Committee. Students' designs were submitted anonymously to the committee, um, which then voted to select the official logo for the new Master Plan. And Kara Morris's design will be permanently linked to this Master Plan and will be used around town and become part of Walpole's history. Uh, Chloe Binden's design took second place and tied for third place were designs by Colleen Finn and Ariana Correntis. Chloe and Ariana were unable to attend to be recognized, but Kara and Colleen are, are present and will answer any questions that you may have. Would you please feel, feel free to come down and uh, sit in the, <laughs> the chair if you like? You have to share the chair. <laughs> Maybe get a second one. Yeah. Oh, we got it. This is more Tally's getting you one. <laughs> so, and I'm just going to hold up. I have these two copies because I don't know that we have them digitally to project, but I'm going to just hold them up in case the camera wants to see what we're looking at here. Um, before the students speak, I'll just say that all of the designs that were submitted were really fantastic, and I remember clicking through all of them and being like, oh, my gosh, that's so good. Oh, my gosh, that one's so good. You know, they were all really tied to what a master plan is, and they all um, incorporated elements of Walpole. So these two in particular, you can see, um, you know, they uh, referenced the bridge in the town forest. Um, that is a really beautiful place in our town, and I think is emblematic of the idea of the master plan taking us into the future from the present. So mm -hmm. I'll stop talking now and let our students speak. Would you, would you please feel free to s okay. any comments or? <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> How about this? Can you tell us a little bit about like, the, the design process? Uh, yeah, basically, we just all in our design class um, got assigned to make a design to display something that like goes to the future of our town. So I just kind of thought of like the White Bridge because yeah. it's been around for so long. Very cool. But, yeah. I kind of like had the same idea because I was like, Oh, a bridge. It's nice. I was actually going to do the um, police station down there. And then, well, since it's not the police station anymore, and, like, the master plan is about, like, the future, I decided to do, like, a more, like, symbol that's, like, more current. So kind of like care. I was like, oh, I'll do the bridge because it's been here a while and it's probably going to be here for another while. So it's kind of like, I guess it could be used as a symbol of Walpole. And my understanding is that Mrs. Abatey, who is on the Master Plan Steering Committee and a member of the Planning Board, came and spoke to your class before you undertook the process, right, to explain yeah. the Master Plan. And what do you remember from that conversation? Uh, I think she was told us to include colors and then say, like, Walpole Master Plan. <laughs> and that was all the requirements. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Further questions or comments from the committee? Um, so I, I just want to thank you, and I, I think it, it's really awesome we, in this space we get to recognize folks um, who kind of give their talents uh, and, and achieve things uh, within our school system, and I think you know it's, it's wonderful you're joined here by your parents today. I know you, both of you come from great um, tra family traditions of community service, and it's good to s we see over and over again young people who take their talents and go and use them to the benefit of, of our community, so I think that's really setting you up for an orientation towards just helping and volunteering and making the community a better place. Even if something like a, a really cool design, it's, 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 some, it's a great way for you to, as a young person, be a part of what we do here in, in our town. So I really appreciate that. And 
other questions or comments? Or? Very good. Well, thank you so much. Thank for you, very thank you much. so much. Thank Congratulations. You. Congratulations. Thank you. And we will be taking the artwork, I think, and attaching it to our newsletter for tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining us. Our, our next uh, recognition we have is for Dr. William Hahn. Uh, I was looking around super, for the recognition. Like, I didn't look <laughs> Assistant <laughs> Superintendent of School. Mr. Hahn, uh, Mr. Hahn came to us from uh, Catholic Memorial High School of the Irish Christian Brothers. He was an assistant principal at Walpole High School for four years, a uh, principal at JMS for five, and then began as our assistant superintendent throughout the pandemic, throughout focusing on student success and student learning and making sure our teachers had the tools that they needed during this pandemic. If that was not enough and those long hours were not enough, Mr. Han then uh, decided it would be a great time to undertake a doctoral program <laughs> at um, Boston College. So on, on top of all that, you have uh, just this week defended successfully your thesis. So we want to, just as a body and the, and the committee, thank you uh, for the work you've done to better yourself and em being an emblematic example of what a lifelong learner is and someone who always is um, and you take that example of professional development and professional advancement and you sh as the person who's in charge of that for all of our teachers I think that gives a truly um, great example for uh, our other staff to model so we first off we just want to congratulate you for a job well done thank you very much Questions, comments, or thoughts uh, from the committee to Dr. Hahn on his uh, doctorate? Anyone? Well, I, I would just say we're really proud. We're really proud of the, as Bill was just saying, the investment in, edu in education. It's, um, it would have been perfectly reasonable for you to say, I need to wait, I need to take a pause and come back to it at a different time because your job got really busy over the last couple of years and we should extend our thanks to your family because you didn't let up a beat here in Walpole while you were putting a lot of work in on your on your doctorate so thank you and congratulations thank you thank you so much and it's, it's really fitting that you're, you're kind of yeah, running second I seat here right, right. in the big chair so <laughs> moving right along our next order of business is our Walpole High School student report uh, Representative Ryan would you like to Good evening, I'm Grace and I'm a junior at the high school. There's been a lot going on, on at the high school the past few weeks. Term three progress reports came out on March 7th, meaning that we are halfway through the third term. Over the next two weeks, students who registered will take the national French, Latin, or Spanish exams during their classes periods. Winter sports have officially wrapped up. Girls and boys basketball and ho hockey teams all put in hard work this year and all qualified for the playoffs. Girls hockey lost in the first round, boys hockey lost in the round of eight, boys basketball lost in the round of 16, and girls basketball lost in the round of eight. Indoor track and field also had several individual athletes and relay teams compete at nationals this past weekend. Congratulations to all winter teams and athletes. The spring season begins with tryouts this Monday, March 21st. Clubs have been extremely busy lately. WHS Drama had their wonderful winter show of Brothers Grimm last weekend. The National Honor Society is selling blue and yellow ribbons to support Ukraine. They are donating proceeds to the Sunflower of Peace, who makes medical bags for medical workers on the front lines. Also, Dance Company continues to prepare for their show on, March, on April 1st and 2nd. Student Council is currently planning for all spring activities, including a pep rally, spring dance, and senior activities. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ryan. Qu questions or comments for Ms. Ryan? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. A lot, Grace. Moving on, we have an out-of-state field trip request. We have Walpole High School alumnus and robotics team uh, advisor Brian Gaffey to request an out-of-state field trip for the robotics team to Houston, Texas from April 19th, 2022 through April 24th, 2022. So, Mr. Gaffey, you want to come down and sure. give us a little bit of information? Absolutely. How? Uh, 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 thank you for uh, listening to uh, uh, this request today. Uh, so yeah, so uh, I'm Brian, and I am the uh, advisor to the robotics team at Walpole High School. Um, currently, uh, in the midst of getting ready for um, our robot competitions that will begin uh, actually this weekend um, is our first competition up at 
um, Reading High School, and then next weekend we have our second competition at Shrewsbury High School. Um, the team uh, is applying to go uh, for an out-of-state um, field trip to go to the uh, Robotics World Championship, uh, which is going to be hosted this year in Houston, Texas. Um, it is uh, during April school uh, vacation week, so luckily the students won't be missing um, a lot uh, a lot of school time to to attend it uh, for this year. Um, a little background about the team. So currently this year, uh, we have about 30 students who are on the robotics team uh, pursuing that. Um, and um, on the team, we have uh, nine uh, young women and 17 uh, young men uh, to make up that, that total there. Um, uh, and additionally, although we might have uh, fewer women, they do take up the majority of the leadership roles on the team, which is always a nice, uh, a nice facet there. They are actually in charge of the three of the five subsystems on the robot. So um, always, always exciting to see their growth over the times there. Um, we're uh, letting you know uh, this, so well, jumping around a few notes here. Um, so yeah, so applying for the world championship in, in April there. So unfortunately, we don't find out if we qualify for the world championship until April 10th. We have to get through all of the New England qualifiers, and April 10th is well within uh, 30 days of the event happening, about a week and a half later in Texas. Um, so that's why we're coming here in advance. Um, this year it is a smaller event to try and be uh, a little bit more COVID friendly. So New England will only be sending the top 19 teams out of the 185 um, that are uh, competing in the district this year. Um, historically, we have uh, finished around the top 20 to top 25. Um, and so that is um, where this is coming from. Additionally, um, for this trip, um, of the students uh, going, only one of the seniors got a chance to attend the last time they got to go in 2019. Um, in 2020, uh, the season obviously ended and they did not have one uh, last season, so it's been about three years for them, so only one student has gotten a chance to attend, attend this event, and only about seven have actually been to a real competition before. So it's an exciting time uh, for them, and they've been putting in a lot, of, um, a lot of hours and a lot of dedication and uh, time over the past few years. Um, they've been learning remotely and they've been able to apply that um, you know, through remote code and remote uh, computer design. Um, and we've, been, uh, we've upgraded our manufacturing abilities in our, uh, the workshop at Plimpton. So the students have been able to take those designs and manufacture um, the whole robot in-house this year, which is the first time that's ever happened, which has been uh, really nice and it it looks a, it's a very, uh, very pretty robot. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully bringing it in in, uh, in May once the competitions have wrapped up, if uh, you all would like to, to see that. Um, it was supposed to be blue and orange, but uh, the paint got a little different, so now it's blue and black, but it still, look, still looks nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, with that, um, the game this year, so the, uh, this is a brief thing, so the students will uh, compete at these two events this weekend to earn qualifying points to try and figure out who the top 20 are. Um, the robots have to climb uneven monkey bars, so these 125 pound robots will be getting up to about six feet in the air, swinging, swinging that whole way. Um, and they also have to pick up these oversized tennis balls and shoot them into uh, a playground goal. I don't really know what they're called, but we have them at like Elm and OPR. It's like a giant funnel on a stick, and you gotta throw it in, and the balls roll out. Um, so it's a very dynamic, uh, exciting game um, for that. Um, but talking about the actual trip there, um, we're looking to take about 15 students with us down to Texas. This is historically what we've done in past years when we've competed at the World Championship, so we're still trying to offer it to as many students as possible. Um, about seven of them, about half are going to be seniors uh, on the team, and the other half are split across the different grades. That way we have more students who have had um, experience with it. Um, and additionally, we've also tried to make it so um, that families are kind of traveling together. So students who, have, uh, who are a senior but have a freshman who is a, a sibling, trying to team those up there. Um, as part of our COVID precautions, um, Texas is very far away from, from Walpole. So what we're uh, hoping to do here um, is we've asked all the students to please travel um, with a parent or guardian who could stay behind with them and kind of treat it as their April vacation uh, just down in, in Texas as a group there. 
Um, and so each uh, family unit would have one hotel room for themselves to keep everyone um, separated that way. We do have four chaperones still attending the trip and chaperones are willing to, uh, at least two are willing to stay behind uh, with any students or uh, families that would need uh, people to stay behind um, in Texas. We're also incorporating in the price an extra hotel room in case anyone might uh, come down with any any sicknesses while we are there, just uh, so they have an option for that. The first competitions in uh, robotics in general uh, do still have a mask mandate in place, so um, the students uh, are masked there. Um, you know, they have uh, the, the temperature screens and make sure people uh, are not currently sy uh, symptomatic um, while they are attending there. Um, and one of the chaperones who are coming, uh, coming with us um, it has been uh, a, a is a medical worker right now, um, and she's let me know that she has worked with the elementary schools, I think, this past year with administering um, COVID tests, um, Terry Saunders. Um, so we're trying to just have that covered um, as well. I would be happy to answer any questions or any topics that uh, I might have missed uh, with this so far. <laughs> questions or comments for Mr. Gaffey? To. I will make a motion to approve the out-of-state field trip request for the first robotics competition in Houston, Texas from April 19th through April 24th. Second. Motion by Ms. Donizio, second by Ms. Syrick. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 600. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gaffey. Uh, hopefully you can come back with uh, some very good uh, news to tell us in May. <laughs> yes, hoping to, hopefully it will be a, a good weekend. We are we're projected to be one of the stronger teams at these two upcoming events, like so it. we're hoping to, to keep this going. This is going. Yeah, can I just add a couple of Absolutely. things? Absolutely. I, I think, first of all, people don't realize with some of these clubs just how much time people spend on them. And I love the fact that we have a couple of Walpole High alumni who will put in that kind of time for our students. I think it's amazing. But if you don't realize, like, I mean, those lights are on at Plimpton until midnight, many, many nights. And so thank you, Brian, for, for what you do. It's, it's fantastic, and I think it's great for kids to see, you know, somebody who liked robotics and has been able to take it into the real world and make a, a living out of it. So, you know, we appreciate that. I love the fact that there are two young women who are doing the same thing with the dance team. And it, it's a good thing. It's just a really... I think a real valuable thing about Walpole. Um, just a couple of, of things that I noted. You've worked really hard to get the parent support, and mm -hmm. you know I, I think you did everything. I, I know because Mark spends a lot of time down there that Brian w started from the point of view of we can't even entertain the thought of going to nationals. Mm -hmm. But then when you thought about the kids and the fact that it was hard to keep a good program alive over the last couple of years because you usually rely on the freshmen and sophomores growing up to be seniors to be the leaders. And thankfully, you have a couple of those. But between the parents and the, and the student leadership, you deserve a lot of credit for keeping the program alive because, you know, we don't have – well – I guess I just I wanted to thank you for doing that. I think it's really important, and I think it it would be fun. At one point, we had to take a field trip down there to take this vote because the um, I don't know the 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 yeah. date came up quickly or something like that. But maybe maybe we should go down there and actually. There's nothing like seeing it. Like you think you might know what it's like, but you don't until you see it in action. And they've got some really cool equipment that. Some of the students own, but they're lending it to the school. And then I think you were able to buy a, a 3D printer that, so you're actually printing some of the pieces that you're using, in, if I'm getting the story correct. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so we've had a few uh, capital improvements that we've uh, focused on. Um, we, we went out and got some grants so we could get some uh, different 3D printers. So the students have been able to uh, design um, smaller robot parts, spacers, pulleys, um, uh, holders, just little little attachment stuff. So that's been very nice. It saved us a lot of money from having to buy, buy those. Um, we get to customize them so the robot looks very blue and orange. Um, and um, he kind of brings the things full circle there. 
Um, and then we also worked uh, with Mr. Bersini and the Unified Arts Department recently to get a, a router. Um, so it's uh, basically like a smart um, drill. So you can give it a, a sheet of metal and you can upload your designs into it and it will drill everything out for you. Um, and so that's allowed us to create our, our launcher plates, our climber arms, our, um, our angle hood, um, all, all parts of parts of the robot, which in the past we've had to you know, have the students design it and then rough cut parts and then unfortunately you know, reach out to local companies to try and cut it. But so now the students have a stronger sense of ownership of the, the robot for this year. Um, it also was a nice little carrot to keep them motivated and learning how to do all the things on the computer of, all right, here's how I can design a climber, but you know, when do I get to, to build it? And then yeah. it was, well, now you get to build it, um, which has been nice. Yeah, no, so just two other things. One is your competitions are are broadcast so people can can watch them if they want to. Um, yes. So maybe you could send the link to to Mary Mortali in the morning or something like that. Absolutely, yeah. So we're um, yeah. So they're they are live streamed online. Um, they are going to be included in the e notes um, this week as well, going oh, out perfect. to the, the whole school there. Um, and actually, one of the parents who we've um, recruited um, does the does internal video uh, video work for Pega Systems, and so they're going to be coming. Uh, they're going to be at the event um, as sort of media there, um, recording recording our robot and all the robots to kind of put together a, little, um, a short clip that we'd be able to to display or share with all of everyone here. That's great. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, best of luck, and really, thank you for the amount of time you put in. It's amazing. It's fantastic, actually. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's, it's just very rewarding and very fun to get a chance to to work with all the students and kind of take these crazy ideas of all right, how do we throw a tennis ball twelve feet in the air and and kind of see where where it takes us. Further questions Job. or comments? Thank you, Mr. Gaffney. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Uh, slightly related, uh, our next order of new business is the curriculum update for Unified Arts. We have Mr. Joseph Persini. Uh, Fan favorite, a uh, longtime high school teacher uh, at Falpo High School and the department chair of the Unified Arts uh, Department to give us a um, curriculum update. Thank you. Um, I'm Joe Brissini. Uh, I'm finishing up my 25th year, at, I just realized, at Walpole High School. And uh, I thought I'd uh, share some of, the, some of the things we're doing in the Unified Arts Department because I haven't been here in a little bit. And I put together a slideshow that I think can, can um, bridge the gap and you know, happy to start explaining uh, the vision of the Unified Arts Department. Um, I'm gonna be talking to you tonight about, uh, about an overview of the program. I'm gonna start with the sixth, seventh and eighth grade, then move on to the high school, and then I'm, I'm gonna get into our philosophy of current practices. Uh, I'm gonna bring up, we have a finance grant to talk about. Uh, I wanted to share how STEM Academy is doing and the robotics club that Brian just told you, so I'll, I'll just show you the picture there. <laughs> and then, then I was, I was going to wrap it up with uh, just to, you know, to end it with um, where we are. Um, so I'll start at Johnson and Bird Middle School, and the, we're really excited with the new addition, with the new uh, middle school coming. It, we feel like it's an opportunity for our curriculum to evolve, and we really think the new space is going to provide quite a bit of flexibility. Uh, but current, we spent quite a few years, the, the teachers at the middle school have been doing a lot of summer R&D, uh, reviewing and revising curriculum. So we have a theme for grade six, which is in, we really like to introduce the technology concepts and work on basic computer programming at the sixth grade level. And then we're mo we move to more sophisticated, sophisticated computer programming in seventh grade. And then when we're in the eighth grade, we're focusing more on robotics and the engineering process. And we recently acquired uh, the Lego Spike Prime kits for both schools, which has been a, a, a really uh, fantastic transition right coming out of the pandemic with those because it, it's a hands-on activity and it's, it's um, fascinating to, to, to move into a current technology. We have two full-time teachers there and the the students take the course uh, a semester based and they have it three times in a seven day cycle. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the high school and I've split it into a couple parts. Uh, when, when we're talking about the high school, we're talking about the business technology and engineering department and so it's called Unified Arts. And 
the what's crucial about this is that all students from all abilities are welcome here so it's designed for all grade levels all ability levels and there is something in this department for, for no matter what your interest is we have seven full-time teachers and myself and all courses that are taught in this department can be applied to our three-year additional core graduation requirement. Uh, so now I'm going to get into, first I'm going to go into technology and engineering. And I'm going to just, there's a few, I'm, I'm listing all the courses, the architectural design, technical CAD, electronics, robotics, engineering design, computer programming, AP, computer science principles, web design, computer animation and, and digital media. Uh, I want to highlight the AP, uh, the AP computer science principles because this is a relatively new course and yet we have three sections of it already and the only requirement for an AP course at this particular course is uh, just to get through algebra, algebra one. Correct. So this is okay. a very uh, <coughs> friendly uh, course and the students are really liking it because we're very surprised we're up to three sections mm -hmm. of it already. In addition to, we do have computer programming as well. Um, also, I wanted to, to, to let you know that uh, we also have computer animation, which is, that's a direct result of the students who really wanted a course like that. So uh, now I'm gonna move into the TV production. And we, we just did a, a, this year, a huge review of this program and we remapped it and it's, Starting in the fall, you'll be television production one, which we have. It's a half year course. We're going to make television production two a half year course. And then we're going to add in the advance as a full year course and also introduce an essentials of television production so that we can, we can provide something for every student who is interested in, in um, TV production. And we're looking forward to that. And then I'm going to move into production technology, which we also call Woodshop. Uh, we have very popular course. We have two, two, two levels of it, the introduction level and the advanced level. Uh, we've spent quite a bit of time in this department, this branch, uh, really focusing on updating the equipment so that we follow the safety standards and we, we've replaced almost, almost everything in that department over the last five years and including the floor. We just replaced the floor, which because uh, a floor has to be, you know, safe when the key, so there's a lot that goes into a floor in a wood shop. So we're really excited about this and we're reviewing constantly the curriculum in this department. To, we're trying to make sure we keep it uh, relevant and with the technology advances to apply to it. Um, where are we going? Now we'll slightly move to the business department. And in here we have accounting, accounting to entrepreneurship, finance, 21st century living, computer applications, and marketing. And what I would highlight the most is finance. It is, it is completely booked. We can run five sections of it. If we, 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 we have students who it's always about 30 kids in each class. And 21st Century Living is, a, is another new course that we've created in the last couple of years so that students can navigate through the ever-changing world right now with topics that relate to their daily lives. And so, the, again, that's another another result of us going through and reflecting on our courses. Um, in the next slide, I'm, go I'm going to just, we follow the technology and engineering, um, the digital literacy standards and the science and technology engineering frameworks when we design all the computer and engineering based courses. And um, the business frameworks are still being developed by the Department of Ed and um, what we do in the meantime is we, we, we visit the English department's frameworks and we take some things from there and we visit, and we visit uh, the social studies because there's some economic stuff in there. And we also take the, some things from in here and we put together uh, our own uh, standards that we're, we're trying to get through. So like the, the visual medium is really big and, and, and so we, we, we can incorporate that into what we're doing. And um, just wanted to go into our, our like our current practices and like our philosophy. Uh, we constantly and consistently review and revise and reflect on our curriculum in order to provide the most 
up to date and relevant information and technology and equipment to our students as as you'll notice from all the things I'm going to I'm going to get into and also there was something I didn't put in the slide but we want to make sure that the students are prepared for future industry standards and and basically we can't let some of the the topics just teach them over and over again because the world changes every year and we cannot be changing we can't be teaching software that's out of date or certain computer that they're not going to be using so we have to give them the the best we can give them so i've been very lucky and to get support and i've been able to um, update almost everything in the entire department uh, all right so some examples of what i'm talking about is we our teachers in this department, they really like the summer R&D that's provided. They, they often will, will map out curriculum and revise it, uh, especially at the middle school level. They spent quite a few years working on that. And they also do that during professional development time when, 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 when granted. Uh, I wanted to highlight the courses that are relatively new. There are six of them. This is all a direct result of us revising and reflecting. Uh, 21st Century Live-In, Computer Animation, TV Production 3, Essentials of Television Production, the AP, Computer Science Principles, and, and Digital Media. Those are all relatively new, and we didn't wait for, you know, we wanted to put them in. Some of the other stuff had to be put aside to get to these. Um, the equipment, where this is where we I have to thank everyone again and again. We have a new ro a bunch of new robotic equipment including those, these robotic hands that I really like because it took it took the stem and it took uh, a lot of the engineering stuff into a science a medical kind of area which a lot of kids were asking because not every student wants to they, some of them are interested in the medical field and not everyone wants to do the the robot kind of area um, the two new computer labs at the high school are state-of-the-art we have the uh, we have the all new computers in there and that we got those built by the first day of school. We, were, we got all the parts in with the supplies and everything and, and we, got, we got that and there's a picture of that in the middle. Um, the entire wood shop, as I said, we've, we've replaced and in the TV production, we're constantly replacing the equipment down there and the, we have two brand new 3D printers at, at, at the high school that we are weaving into all our curriculum and everybody's this year our goal is for everyone to just learn how they want to use them and the students are using them and we're figuring out where they fit best and that's been a lot of fun the 3d printers as i, I mentioned earlier we also have a uh, we've we just received a fifteen thousand dollar finance grant in the last month and this grant will allow us to um, work on reviewing the curriculum to make sure that we can provide meaningful financial literacy curriculum for all our students and to help prepare them for the ever-changing future that awaits for them. Uh, what we plan to do with this current amount is to replace the entire lot of textbooks. And we think we could get about 150 textbooks out of this. And we're also gonna spend some time re extensively reviewing the curriculum and how, how we're gonna, um, this course will be uh, taught in the future and what direction it will go so we can have more students in this course. All right, now we have another program at the high school that I, I oversee. I know there's a lot, but I think, I think I've think i departmentalized it. Uh, that I really enjoy the STEM Academy that I took over when I became department chair. It has evolved quite a bit since it's, it's, uh, it's a four-year program at the high school. Currently, there's about 55 students in it for all four grades. Uh, they apply at the end of the eighth grade. I usually go down to the eighth grade and visit and discuss and, and I show them um, the program and what, what it entails. And then they apply to get in and I review it with um, the science department and the math department chairs. And we, we admit them. And then the minute they get to the high school, we meet with them the first day, welcome them in the, in the orientation. and we help them find the club for them. And most of them will end up in, in the robotics clubs. Uh, some of them will go to the math team. Some of them will go to the science. But we require them to be in one of those clubs all four years. And then sophomore year, which we're trying to pull it off this year, but we usually go on a field trip. And we used to go to Olin College. And now 
we have, uh, we've had some interactions with um, some people from the community have reached out to us and we're possibly gonna have a small field trip to possibly the Gillette area uh, in the, before the end of the school year. Uh, the junior year, which they're currently doing, they have a shadowing project where they have to go out and visit someone. And we were flexible with that. They could do it virtually at first, but now this year they're, they're gonna pick someone and try to go to their work for the day. And, and then they just do, they do a presentation about it. And then senior year, they solve a problem. They have a capstone project. And that's actually, it's been pretty successful. The current schedule we run, it was a result of a, a project one of the students had done. They had designed the schedule format. Uh, one year they did traffic patterns that we used with the pandemic. Um, there was another kid that we didn't, we didn't run it because they wanted to uh, rent out their parking spaces and make, sell them for a dollar if they weren't mm -hmm. here. But I didn't know the legality of that, but <laughs> it was extremely creative. And that's an ex they, they wanted to find a way to find yeah. an app to, to make the spot useful if you're mm -hmm. an underclassman. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's that program. And then Brian was here and I have some pictures that, uh, of his team. And this is the group they're going to compete this weekend. And I really wanted to, to, to um, build on what Nancy said. Uh, the coaches, the students, the parents, the mentors, the volunteers, they, they give extensive time for this program to make it a success. Uh, the, I did the least, I, I mean, I gave him access to equipment. I, he's thankful, but he did all the work. Uh, I'm happy to get him any equipment that can keep the program going. Uh, they're competing over the next few weeks and I, w I wish and them the best of luck and uh, I'm very thankful for all their hard work and, and the program is, is thriving and it's hard to do a hands-on program when you're not allowed to mm -hmm. be together. Um, and I just wanted to thank everyone here for letting me come and explain the program and also for all the support, the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, the building principals, uh, Everybody has been very supportive of the entire program, and I feel that all this success I'm having is a direct result of the commitment to the program. And any questions, I'll happy to answer. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Brissini. I'm sure the student who was subletting his spaces, maybe he get, hook him up with a push up <laughs> or a summer internship, try to uh, <laughs> do something good with our, with our school budget. Um, questions or comments from the committee? Ms. Syrek. Um, I have a question and a couple comments. Um, all the programs look amazing. I have a junior and I know he's taking advantage of a couple of them. Some of the details behind the programs are those on the school website. You could look through the program guide yes, to maybe learn a little bit more about you oh, know, some every, of the classes. Everything's on our website yeah. and, I, and the program of studies explains everything. The STEM Academy has its own okay. section of the school's website. Because I could probably ask you a question on all of them, but I, you know, yeah. for anybody who's watching or watching this later, I know that there's more detail behind some of that. Um, so I work for SolidWorks. I don't think it's what you guys are using now, but I'm not here for sales pitch. Um, so I would be happy to participate in the shadowing or to hook you guys up with a field trip if you're interested. Um, there's also um, this really great program that SolidWorks sponsors other um, CAD companies might as well. LN4, it's LN Meadows. It's an LN4, they build prosthetic hands for people and okay. it's all sort of grant funded and supported and volunteered. And they are now working on arms. So there's a contest, it's the like letter L, letter N, four, arm for all contest. So like, you know, you'd show the robotic hands and I know that's something that people are interested in, but you know, kids who want to do robotics and sort of that life sciences, the LN4 might be something they want to look at because it's a really good opportunity. It's, there's a contest right now, but there's a lot of volunteering opportunities as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Further questions are coming, Ms. Denizio. Um, this is all very exciting to hear about. My children are younger and I have to say that I really had no insight at all into a lot of the great stuff that's happening in your department. And so um, I think my only comment, I feel like we, we sort of owe it to you to sort of maybe publicize what's going on a little bit more and promote it a little bit more. I mean, the STEM Academy is an excellent program. Seems like something that there'd be a ton of interest in. And so I guess I would say maybe don't be shy about tooting your own horn. Um, no you know, like send photos to Mary or, you know, 
put stuff out there in whatever forum, in Mr. Inbush's e-notes or whatever, because um, this is all really tremendous cutting edge stuff that's going on. And I just don't know if, if you don't have a child at the high school, if you're necessarily aware of it all. And I think it really deserves to be um, spotlighted. So, and thank you for everything you're doing. This is wonderful. Excellent. Further questions, Mr. O'Hearn, let's get by Ms. Gowan. Yeah, I just I really appreciate hearing about the accessibility of the courses um, and how you mentioned that they can be taken across grade levels and even experience levels and um, access to the AP course especially. Um, I think one of the things that the DLCS standards does, um, you know, if applied right, is really draws in all students um, because when they exit high school, you know, there's not going to be a field that isn't touched by computer science in some way. So having all of these courses and their accessibility gives kids access to that now and just gives them a jump start ahead, whether they're interested in you know, creative writing or something like that, being able to apply those um, thoughts and ideas and you know, even mental designs around some of their stories into computer science um, is only going to enhance their careers further. In, in all of our thanks, in all of our courses, when you if you ever visit one, you'll see a ninth grader, a tenth grader, an eleventh grader, a twelfth. You'll see all the different grades and all the different abilities all together. <laughs> and and a lot of other, it's a hard, it's it's hard to teach that. Our, our teachers do a great job, but you have to really adapt to all all different abilities. And uh, so sometimes when people walk by, they're they're always like, what what is this? And I'm like, well, this is the real world because mm -hmm. in the real world you're not all the same age when you're working together, and and so uh, it is a it is probably the best part of the day in the classroom for me because I like seeing all the different dynamics together. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Galvin. Um, just a couple of thoughts. One is I also really like the idea of there's something for everyone in in your department. I think that's an important, you know, a really important piece. Um, can you explain a little bit about, you mentioned the additional core three-year requirement. I've never, like, I've never really exactly understood that. Okay. I, I definitely can explain that. That okay. I can do this one. It was called non-core last year. It's now called additional core. Okay. We wanted to align more with uh, the, the standard. It, it, the, the, we thought the word non-core, that, that phrase was, a, a, was not a positive. Sure. Phrase. Okay. So every student at the high school has to take the required English courses, the required math, all the other ones. But there's also a three-year uh, additional core requirement. And it's not just in, in, in here. It also includes like the music department, the art department. See, that's what I was wondering. And, and, and so we have a, we have a book in, the, in uh, the program of studies, and it explains it in detail. And we, we constantly revisit it because of... Uh, what course qualifies for what, okay. and and uh, we are so students go through it and and they can they can they can pick something from here or something from that other area, and it, it has like a pretty detailed map, and, and it includes TV, film, all that stuff, and they have to take uh, three units of it, so fifteen credits. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and my other question, not that not that I'm like really looking for an answer right now, is but. Would you consider doing quarter year classes rather than semester classes? Um, and like my the reasoning is just because there are so many good offerings. And if there's somebody who just wants a sampling of of something, and even the the financial literacy class, you know, I wonder if. When you, when you have a student in the high school and they start to do their schedule, you look at all this good stuff and you're like, wow. And then there's, they'll say, but I don't have time to fit that in. So I'm wondering if we, instead of having all the classes be either a full year or a semester, if some of them were broken up into quarters. Because what made me think of it is at the middle school, the classes don't meet as frequently as the science or the math or the social studies. So they're already on a different schedule. Let's you put like pair things in together. Yeah, I don't know. It, so I just, I just wanted to bring it up as when we talk about wanting to give kids more choice, one way of doing it is 
to not have to log into a full year course. And you've already done a bunch of semester courses, but I was just wondering if you, if there's any value to thinking about half semester classes. It's part of our conversation at the high school with the, with the principal and the, the guidance chair. Um, we have the eighth period now. That seems to have helped a lot. Uh, we added. Good. Okay. Yep. But we have this. We're having this internal conversation about um, quarter courses and how to, how to pair them up so that kids can access other things, especially like there's been some time with their guidance counselors and right. things like that. And so that, that is a discussion. I, I, I'll bring it back to the principal and everyone at the high school. And uh, that's part of, we have a, a committee that gets together and, and, and uh, works on graduation requirements and scheduling and stuff like that. I'll, I will bring that back. Thanks. Thank you. Further questions? Uh, just a couple, Mr. Bassini. Uh, I, I liked what you t talked about and um, we have said to your other colleagues who are department heads uh, when, when they c come into us, there's a, there's a focus about um, encouraging our high school students to take advanced placement courses. I, I'm excited that you have this new course that is instantly popular and is also, as kind of Sean alluded to, quite accessible. And I would just, I think we've give, delivered this message uh, to, to your other colleagues. D don't be afraid to continue to pursue um, courses like that, high level courses, tapping kids who uh, may not take uh, APs in other areas to kind of take a chance and do something that's um, a little more rigorous, and I think that's really exciting. How, how many years has this been going on now? This is this is the the third. Mm -hmm. uh, the first year was uh, right when the pandemic. So this is the third. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is our third year. So it's up to three. It was started with like one, and now it's up to three. That's great stuff. Periods, um, yeah. Uh, number one, number two. Uh, good work on, on the grant. I think it's good. we were always uh, appreciative of uh, our our teachers and administrators who hustle and seek those additional opportunities, and there's a lot of stuff out there. I know the treasurer as well um, has uh, her a strong focus on financial literacy. And um, finally, I think you're an ex an ex it's an exciting time to be in the school district as we uh, build our new uh, middle school, as we begin to look at the needs of the building you're in. So we're, as a body, going to be having a lot of dialogues in the next year or so uh, uh, with informed by you and, and your colleagues information about you know, what does a STEM classroom in a 21st century middle school look like and I think it's just as you um, you know when I was I, I didn't take any classes but a lot of my friends did in 2002 Wobble High it was a very different tech I, I think in middle school I still we still had drafting boards and things of that nature with you know the big drafting paper you've seen uh, your department in the high school probably almost more than any other really shift and change and you're kind of in a cool position to continue to, to, to mold that going forward. So I think there's a lot of funding opportunities as well that we're going to look at. I know we've taken care of the HVAC issue and the wood shop, but I think you're, you're a very consumable heavy department. Um, so I think we're, we're very attuned to that. So it's an exciting time and I think just the more you can offer and I, I like you know, Nancy, it's kind of idea of like a psych uh, psych and social, but for tech, perhaps I, I think those are the more students. I, I mean, I, I firmly believe it, uh, financial literacy should be a graduation requirement at this point. I, I wish it was for me, um, but I think these these provide so much value, and the more students we can have, kind of just take a taste of some of the things you offer. I think is really um, helpful to them to get a really well-rounded education from our high school. So great stuff, and thank you for thank uh, you. joining us. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, you. Take care. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for coming today. It's oh, awesome. no problem. Mm -hmm. Our next order of business is the strategic plan update. Uh, Dr. Hahn, would you like to? Yeah, can I roll that right into my superintendent report? How's that? You that very well may. All right, good. Assistant <laughs> superintendent report. Yeah. But yeah. Don't get, <laughs> the guy gets a doctor. He's all I was just reading right. from the agenda. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, last week, Walpole Public Schools held our annual strategic planning meeting with a number of stakeholders uh, across the district and community. For those that are not familiar uh, with the strategic plan process, it is um, ultimately culminates to a district document that establishes a long-range direction for the district and provides a clear focus for future pursuits by identifying priorities for improvement. So this organizational planning process is the culmination of work consisting of teachers, administrators, parents, students, Many, several, many members of our school committee were there, and of course, community leaders. 
Um, this plan, this actual plan that we've been working on was developed in the spring of 2021, and it is monitored for progress, minor edits, and updates um, through spring of 2024. So our strategic plan also defines the mission, the vision, guiding beliefs and goals and objectives, which guides the school district during the next, um, it's supposed to be over five years, but in the next uh, two to three for us. Um, everything we do stems from our strategic plan. Our leadership goals are based on our strategic plan. Our building-based school improvement plans are off our strategic plan. And ultimately that trickles down to each of our educators' um, personal goals. Um, so we want to thank the over 40 attendees. I think Mary said we had about 43 who participated last week. Um, and as the final edits are made um, and updated, we will bring that update to the school committee for a final copy and to make sure that you all see it and approve of all the edits that are made. So it was a, it was a we've been doing it virtually, as everyone knows, for the last couple of years. But um, I'm always impressed with the enthusiasm and that people bring. And there's still, I actually think in some ways, the, I don't want to say increased participation, but you know, people are still able to really engage and participate in the work. And a couple of groups have met since strategic plan, already met again um, to, to finalize a few things. So it was an, another great day and a great process um, in our strategic Excellent. plan. Uh, questions or comments from uh, colleagues who may have participated or Ms. Dimitri. I'll just second um, Dr. Hahn's comments about the energy and the enthusiasm. It's not quite the same virtually, but it you still feel that it's there. Um, there's definitely the drive to kind of move uh, move us forward as a district. And I, I commented separately that, you know, hearing at the beginning the progress that has been made on so many fronts over the last year was really kind of breathtaking when you consider that we were also operating a district in pandemic conditions. Um, and yet there, there is such a long list of accomplishments and um, progress that we can be proud of. And um, it was really something to just have it all laid out in one place. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the full revised plan soon and, and getting that out there to the community so they can see where we're at. Further questions or comments? Rolling right along to your okay. assistant well, superintendent yeah, report. Yeah, well, customary COVID, COVID report. So the week of 3-6 to 3-12, we had five cases down from 23 the prior week. Um, when we, uh, as to date, we only have we only have four courses, four cases, excuse me, this week. Um, our positivity rate continues to decline. Last week it was 2.83, and as of this morning it was 2.25. So we're going in the right direction. Um, our vaccin vaccination status for each of our elementary schools: Boyden 54%, Fisher 69, Elm 62, OPR 65, uh, the middle schools 69, and the high school at 84%. So um, we know these numbers might fluctuate a little bit as students move in and out of the district, um, but those numbers continue to, um, to rise. And as we anticipated, and I think a lot of health experts anticipated, as the masks come off, our students work closer together, we have other illnesses coming into the district. So we keep practicing good uh, hand hygiene and uh, we just remind all parents um, and caregivers to just please keep your child home if they do not feel good, if they have symptoms of COVID or other illness um, and to pay attention to the updates coming from our principals um, when these things hit some schools a little bit harder than others. <laughs> and finally, I don't want to cause a stir, but apparently there was evidence of a pesky leprechaun <laughs> that caused oh, some yes. trouble in a few of our kindergarten classrooms. So first probably, probably oh, first grade too. Yeah. So probably worth keeping an eye on. Just want to make that. I, through you, uh, through myself, I, I just want to point out that I, I said this three years ago. I, I am troubled that our, our littlest uh, neighbors here in Walpole, the wee people, uh, are targets of these of these traps. And I think yeah. the first one was Ms. perhaps Mrs. Hunter over at uh, Old, uh, Old Post Road a few years ago. And, and the, uh, the attempts to, uh, the unsuccessful attempts to capture leprechauns seem to have uh, promulgated through our district, I was told Lucky Charms were found on a floor in Fisher School this morning. So I, I think this is something that the body should look at more closely and uh, continue to follow. But uh, other than that, any other? That's it. Excellent work. Very good. Moving on, we have a middle school building project a report. Um, any of our colleagues who are on the school building committee, any new update? Have we picked a color yet? <laughs> <laughs> we, had a, we had a successful community forum. We did. Yeah. It was quite well. And that, that successful community forum, which we will attach to our keynotes this of this evening's meeting, is also available on YouTube. I think there are some really good uh, 
clarifying questions from members of the community. Yeah, I would just say that they're getting ready to hire the construction company. Okay. And um, there'll be some preliminary work done dur during the summertime, basically, is what I'm taking away. But I think they're, they're, I know that they're talking about having another community forum before anything happens on the property. Um, they just needed a little bit more time to line that, that part up. But yeah, things are moving along. Yeah. Always exciting. exciting. Yeah, really exciting. Yeah. Anything further on that? Uh, moving on, uh, subcommittee activity? Has anyone met since last meeting? Uh, seeing none, citizens' comments? Seeing no citizens. Approval of warrants, donations, and minutes. Mr. O'Hearn. Yes, we do have some of those. Um, I'd like to make motion to approve the following expense warrants uh, for the amounts listed in your packet. Um, warrants number 222036 and 222037. Second. Motion by Mr. Hearn, second by Ms. All Those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 600. I'd also make a, like to make a motion to approve the following payroll warrant for the amount listed in your packet, and that is 2236PA. Motion by Mr. Hearn, second by Ms. Denizio. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 600. Someone would like to take uh, gift and donation approval. Yes, I will make a motion to Sorry. approve the following gift yes. and donations. A little aggressive on the last one. To the Boyden School, Old Post Road School, Elm Street School, and Fisher School from Dedham Savings, a community partner donation in the amount of $1,500. Second. Motion by Ms. Denizio, second by Ms. Syrick. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 600. We thank uh, Dedham Savings for their generosity. Ms. Sarah, would you like to take the minutes? Sure. I'd like to make a motion to approve the following minutes, the March 3rd, 2022 School Committee meeting minutes and the March 3rd, 2022 School Committee Executive Session meeting minutes. Second. second. Uh, motion by Ms. Sarek, second by Ms. Gayotitz. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 600. Zero, zero. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. Motion by Ms. Gayotitz, second by Ms. Sarek. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 600. Zero, zero. Thank you very much and have a very nice evening.